Okay, we're gonna put our tappets in. We've got a little tang here. This one's weird. You have to put it in from the bottom of the engine. And get it in there. It'd be easier with the crankshaft out, but you can't do that. Okay, it fell down in there. You can kind of see it in there. Here's intake. We had them labeled and I took the paint off them. Okay, then we're gonna have to turn our crankshaft a little bit. Also, this is our crank position sensor. There's a sensor on the side of the block over here that tells the ECM where number one top dead center is. Okay, exhaust is towards the back. So these are kind of a booger. If you got big hands, they don't fit in there very good. So there's five. Okay, here's four. We gotta turn the crankshaft so we can get to it. So I can't get my big old fat fingers down in there. See, there's some spalling on that, scarring. Didn't have enough lube in it. I've dumped some oil down in here. May have to get a magnet or something. There it goes. There's intake. Same thing, it's got some spalling on it. This is one of those things that when you change the camshaft, you change the lifters, they're match set. So we'll turn it so we can get to the next one. Okay, here's two. So if you've got big hands, you're probably going to have to get a magnet or some kind of gripper. Put these in here. You have to make sure they fall all the way down. I'll also go dump some more oil on these when we're done to make sure that there's plenty of oil in it. Because if you had to do a camshaft in one of these, what you have to do to get the camshaft out is have the engine either inverted on a stand like we are, or you're going to have to put it, they have a certain size dowel rod that goes into that lifter and holds it up. So now when I do this, I'll roll the engine up on the front, make, and that'll make sure those stay down after I pour some oil in there to hold them. We'll dump some oil on them, make sure there's plenty of lube there. Getting some in the cam too while I'm at it. Engine assembly lube or something works a little better sometimes too because it's a little more sticky. Uh, this has some uh, Lucas oil which is thicker in it. And like I say, I'm trying to get bushings too while I'm at it. Okay. Okay, we're gonna install a camshaft. We're gonna look at these lobes really good. Make sure there's no dead spots in it as we go in. I've wiped it off already. I don't see anything bad on this one. I lube my bearings already. Ooh, kind of a trick to get in. If you're patient, slowly lower down. Like I said, I'm looking at all my lobes as I go. So it'll hang up on the lobes as you go in, and that's what damages the cam bearings. My retainer's down here. It's already on there. I just have to put the bolts in it. Make sure this is in the right spot. My retainer. There you can see the O to O. There's another O over here that will go to my fuel pump. See right there, there, and there. That's where the teeth line up. So the engine is timed. The reason I can tell is there's two zeros there and one there. If you look at the other gear that goes right here when I put the fuel pump on, where are you? Right there. You see that that, nope, that gear would go like that and the engine would be timed. Okay, now I need to put my cam retainer bolts in. So I'm going to pick it up just up here so I can get them started. Those torqued 18 foot pounds as well. I'm 
torque those two bolts and the camshaft's installed. So we need to check our backlash on our gear, which you can see we have plenty there. That's probably eight thousandths or so.